Hey guys, welcome to How to Wire It. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at how to wire buttons and switches. Now, buttons and switches are basically the same thing electronically. They make or break a connection based on either pushing or switching the switch. So, wiring up a button and switch are basically the same, so I'm going to start out with the button and then I'll just do the switch right after. So, for the button, if you have these little tactile buttons that come with four little legs, the way I remember how to wire these is the legs come out of one of the, or come out of two of the sides, either this side or this side. They do not come out of this side here. And see, they pop out there, but not out that side. So, a button being a switch, a type of switch, basically connects two different places. To each other. So with this button, we're not actually connecting, you know, four pins or disconnecting four pins. There's really only, we're connecting one side to the other when we push the button. So the way I remember how these guys are set up is that by looking at it and you can see which side the pins come out of, the sides that don't have pins coming out, those are already connected. So by default, without any anything else this pin here and this pin here are connected to each other as well as on the other side this pin and this pin really you could just think of them as one whole side to the button and the other whole side to the button so what we want to do is when we push the button this side and this side connect to each other so when we put it on our breadboard, I find the easiest way to just basically force yourself into wiring it up correctly is to basically go over the gap in the breadboard, to bridge that gap with the button. And the legs will only really permit you to do that one way and they won't really be long enough to go the other way. So I put it in like that and now we have the button on the breadboard. And we do want a wire to go from one of our pins to the button. And we want power hooked up to the button as well. Now, at this point, you might think, well, you're done. You push the button, it connects power to the pin, and there you go. The one problem with this is that when the button isn't being pressed or the switch isn't in the right position, the pin basically doesn't have any input because when we push the button, we're connecting this right side of the button here to the left side hooked up to power. So when we push it, we know that there's power flowing to the Arduino. But when we release the button, there's nothing from the pin connecting it to anything. Sure. To the button from this wire but where does it go from there we haven't really completed any circuit here and this is what we call a floating pin so this pin currently without the button being pressed has no state it doesn't have a high or a low so when we push the button it's high we're, we're connecting it to our positive it's being pulled high we know that but in order to give it a, an off state, a low state, we also need to, when the button isn't pressed, connect this, this wire, connect this pin to something to give it a state. So what we do is we use a resistor, and this is a 1K resistor, and we connect it on the same column that we have our button connected on to our pin, and we connect it to ground. So now, when the button isn't being pressed, when it's not being pressed, there is a slight connection here to ground through this resistor. And this will basically give, force this pin into a state, force it into the low state when the button isn't pressed. Without this resistor, the pin doesn't really know what to think. It could be high, it could be low, it doesn't really know what to think until you push that button. So it's kind of you know, it won't give you very good results. So we use this pull down resistor is what it's called. And it basically just 
forces this pin into a low state connected, connected to ground when the button isn't being pressed. So that's all it takes to wire a button. That's all the wiring. The switch is basically the same thing. We'll just pop it in there and I'm going to take this red wire here and the switch has got three legs on it. So we're only going to care about the middle pin and one of the outer pins. It doesn't matter which one but one of those two pins. So on my breadboard here I'm going to take the red wire and I'm going to plug that into the center pin there. So you can't really see the pins in the video here but it's wired into the center of those three pins. And now I'm going to choose the right side will be my on state and flipping it left will be the off state. So again I'm going to take a resistor, this is another 1k resistor, and I'm going to connect it to ground and then to the right side pin there. And then we need another wire to connect it to our pin. So the same column as the resistor. And I'm going to plug it into a, the pin over there. And that's all the wiring that we need for this. Now, to make this video a little bit more helpful so that you can actually see what's happening, I have a couple of LEDs here. I have a green and a red LED. The green LED is going to be turned on and off with the switch and the red LED is going to be turned on and off with the button. So I'm going to wire up this LED into this little pin over here and use a resistor here to connect it to ground. There's a current limiting resistor. These resistors, the way they're being used, are called pull-down resistors and the way the resistor is being used with this LED is called a current limiting resistor. So, the red LED, I'm going to pop into a socket over here and use a current limiting resistor to connect it to ground. Okay, so now we have this wired up. When we push the button, this red light will turn on. When we flip the switch, this green light will turn on. So, let's take a look at the code that makes all this work. Alright, so here we have the code for our buttons and switch and our LEDs. And at the top, we, you can see we define our LED pins, our red pin and green pin as 10 and 11. And we also define our button and switch pins as 13 and 14. And then in setup, we do a pin mode for red pin and green pin as outputs, and the button and switch pin are inputs. So down here in loop, it's really quite simple. We do an if and else statement for each of the button and pin. And first thing we do is we say if digital read button pin, if that's equal to high, i.e. we're pushing our button here, then our red pin, we're going to turn it high. So you can see the red pin is turning on and off as I push and release the button. And the else statement is what turns it off. So if it's high, then we turn the LED on. But else, which is basically otherwise, turn it off. And now the switch here is the exact same thing. It's we're going to read and see if the switch pin is high, and if it is, we turn the green pin on. And if it's not, we turn the green pin off. So on, off, and that. So we can do both at once, do whatever we want, and it's a very simple little program here. So that's the basics of wiring up buttons and switches. They're really simple devices, but really quite important to most projects. Usually you want at least some sort of a, a button to do something, or a power switch, or a selector switch. So that's where buttons and switches come in really handy. And if you like this video, definitely check out more of the How to Wire It series. And definitely like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also find me at itkindaworks.com and on my Twitter at itkindaworksinc. Alright, well, that's all there is for this video. I'll see you guys next time.